Hi, I'm Jan De Silva of New Bedford Whaling National Historical Park, and I'm here to talk about the top 10 reasons why Frederick Douglass considered New Bedford his home. Frederick Douglass lived in several communities from the time of his escape as an enslaved person in 1838 to his death in 1895 in Washington, D.C. I'm here to show and prove to you that New Bedford is the place he called home. We all know Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey was born enslaved on the eastern shore of Maryland in February 1818. He was moved to Baltimore early in his life and trained as a caulker on the wharves of, the Fells, of Fells Point in Baltimore. Frederick, being an inquisitive child, always questioned why he was enslaved and began to plan how to obtain his freedom. While in Baltimore, he met Anna Murray, a free woman, who worked for a white family. She encouraged Frederick to make his plans to escape and provided funds for his train ticket. On September 3, 1838, Frederick started his 24-hour journey to freedom, taking the train north to Philadelphia. Once he arrived in New York City, Anna joined Frederick and they were married by Reverend J.W.C. Pennington, becoming Frederick and Anna Johnson. David Ruggles, a leader of New York's abolition community, suggested they go to New Bedford where Frederick could find work on whaling ships as a caulker. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson soon left New York on a ship going to Newport, Rhode Island. Once in New Bedford, the newly married Johnsons went to the home of Nathan and Polly Johnson, African-American abolitionists and entrepreneurs. This home became Frederick and Anna's first home in freedom. So, now I'm gonna make my argument here. The top 10 reasons why New Bedford is home to Frederick Douglass. One, Frederick escaped from slavery as Frederick Bailey, but was reborn as Frederick Douglass in New Bedford. Two, New Bedford was Frederick Douglass' first free home when he and Anna stayed with the Johnsons on 7th Street in what is now the rear of the building. Three, Frederick Douglass earned his first paycheck in freedom that was not shared with his master when he earned two silver half dollars putting away coal from Mrs. Ephraim Peabody, wife of the minister of the First Unitarian Church. Four, Frederick Douglass lived in New Bedford when he became a subscriber of the Liberator and first read it at the table of Nathan Johnson. Five, Frederick Douglass took the name Douglass on the recommendation of Nathan Johnson, who was reading Sir Walter Scott's Lady of the Lake at the time. Six, Frederick Douglass became a licensed preacher in 1839 at the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church in New Bedford, where he honed his oratorical skills in sermons. Seven, Frederick Douglass first heard William Lloyd Garrison at New Bedford's Liberty Hall on April 13, 1839. Eight, Frederick Douglass paid his first poll tax to vote in New Bedford by 1840. Nine, Three of his children were born in New Bedford, Rosetta in 1839, Louis Henry in 1840, and Frederick Jr. in 1842. Even though the family had moved to Lynn by this time, Anna was most at home with her companions and community in New Bedford. And 10, Frederick Douglass started his abolitionist career while living in New Bedford when he spoke at the Nantucket Athenaeum on August 12, 1841. So these 10 reasons show us that Frederick Douglass would not have been Frederick Douglass if he had not come to New Bedford in 1838. Frederick Douglass and Anna Murray Douglass found a vibrant African-American community that was anti-slavery based and had the ability to support each other. Of course, it was not a perfect place, but Frederick Douglass was able to grow and learn while living in this northern community he called home.